who we are. So New York Times was founded in 1851 with a very simple mission is like we want to seek the truth and help the people understand the world. Most of you in this room are aware of New York Times being in the news. Uh, we have been in this industry for more than 100 years. But many of you may not be aware of the scale of our digital footprint. So what I mean by that? So at any given month, we have 150 million users visiting our applications across the site, like desktop, mobile. Not only that, as of now, we have more than 3 million paid new subscription, making it not only in the US, but in the whole world, the most successful new subscription business. On any given day, we publish around 250 original piece of journalism. And that's a great work that our newsroom is pushing towards it. So let's switch the gear and talk about something interesting to all of us. Elections. So what is elections to New York Times? So election to New York Times is like Thanksgiving to most of the retailers. New York Times is like the most highly anticipated traffic event that we ever experienced. In the, uh, and you can see from the graph, the purple line, it's kind of black in the screen, but this line over down is like our normal average traffic. And as you can see the orange one, that's the traffic that we see on the election results day. And that's a huge spike. So preparing for this kind of uh, traffic is imperative for us. So last year, midterm elections were approaching. And the goal of our midterm elections was, we want New York Times to be the key destination for our user for stable, performant, and up-to-date key election results. Traditionally, uh, midterm elections are not a big deal for New York Times in terms of traffic. But considering like the political climate that we are seeing, the projection for the traffic were skyrocketing. And on top of that, we have some challenges that will make it a little harder for us to achieve the goal. So the number one challenge we have is since the election of 2016, we completely changed our infrastructure. We are now in the cloud. In 2017, every single component of the New York Times is in the cloud. And not only that, we completely change how the de development teams approach the infrastructure. Now each team is responsible for deployment of and as well as like for in taking care of the incident management for their own application. On top of that, we now have more subscriber than we ever had. And compared to election of 2016, we have 2x subscription growth. As you can see from the chart on the left, or oh sorry, on the right of the screen, <laughs> It just keep growing. So now we have more users. We completely change our infrastructure, the political climate, and we were just like, oh shit, we are in trouble. So we have to work on it. So to work on that, we created a project called Operation Election Readiness. And the goal of this project, the mission of this project was to organize a mass, uh, massive cross-team effort. We are talking about more than 20 teams and different functions, technology, newsroom, customer service, that we all have to work together to make the goal achievable. The structure of the project was something like this, where we had like an election leads committee, where, which is representative of a bunch of functions, like someone from the engineering, uh, pro program managers, and they were getting constant input. If you see the right side on the screen, uh, delivery engineering is my team. So they were getting constant input from us and the stakeholders on consultation as how, to, how we need to prepare for it. And we, along with the election leads, were guiding the production, like the uh, development teams on how to prepare for it. And clicker works. <laughs> so for today's topic, we're gonna focus on my team, which is delivery engineering. So our team were given three main tasks, one, uh, we wanted to do the assessment of the architecture reviews. As I mentioned, now every team is responsible for their own development and like deployment and taking care of the infrastructure, et cetera. So we wanted to make sure that they are following the best practices. So we started with assessing them, like what is the uh, level of maturity that they are going through it? And we started assigning some tasks that they want to prepare for it. Second, we conducted a stress test to make sure that we are scalable. How many of you in the room has heard or know stress test? Wow, that's quite a, okay. it makes my life easier. So we'll go through some slides faster. 
So for the rest of the session, we're going to focus on the stress testing and how we utilize that to prepare for the elections. Third, even though how hard we try, we will still have production issues. Can anyone in this room can say that their system is completely bulletproof? Right. If someone is raising their hand, I need to talk to you. <laughs> so how hard we try, we will still have issues in the production. But our goal was, whenever we have these issues, we want to minimize that. So we started incident management training, and we trained more than 100 or 150 developers within a month period of time on if anything happens, how we should debug it. We created a process, and we did all this kind of stuff. It was cool. So as I mentioned for the rest of the talk, we're going to focus on the stress testing. What is stress testing? So stress testing is a testing in which you are testing the system capacity by throwing like large amount of virtual traffic. In a very simple term, stress testing is trying to break your site and learning and identifying the bottlenecks, which will not allow you to scale. Anyone attended the SLO workshop yesterday? Few of them. There was a nice point uh, on the SLI, is that one of the SLI was the saturation. Like, how, like, let's say if your system is able to handle, let's say, 100 RPS, how much, how much stretch it can go through it. And you can also use uh, stress testing to identify that SLI for you. So for the stress testing, the second thing that will come to your mind is, so what is the difference between stress testing and load testing? And the biggest difference is, in the load testing, your focus is to analyze the system behavior under expected load. So what I meant is, you know that your system is going to get, let's say, 500 RPS. So you, th you do a simulation of 500 RPS, and then you analyze your system health, is like how the CPU is doing, what are the resources are there. And mostly it's been used to determine the throughput, like what is the maximum capacity of my application. It's also used to identify the resources needed. We are in the cloud environment. Everyone is aware of the cloud cost. So you can also use this kind of load testing to make sure how much actual cloud resources I need. On compared to that, stress testing is, as, as I mentioned, is like it's more focused on identifying the bottlenecks, like which part of your microservices or which part of like your application will start breaking first, or what are the things that you will analyze if you're going over the expected limits of your system. And mostly it's been used to conduct, uh, prepare for the high level events such as elections, uh, Thanksgiving, more or less like selling out of tickets for a major concerts. And you can also do this regular exercise to actually analyze the maturity of your own application. So what are the key objectives for the stress testing that we wanted to do for that? The number one objective was we wanted to make, we want to verify that the system that we have is scalable. So what it means is like we wanted to test that it will be able to handle the traffic, and not only the traffic in a gradual, but sometimes you also have peaks in the election, as you can see from the graph. So we wanted to simulate all those kind of scenarios to make sure that we are prepared for it. Oops. <laughs> Second, not only that, we wanted to make sure our site is performant. So what I meant is you go to New York Times on the election results day, your site is loading, it's taking three to four seconds. How many of you still will wait <laughs> for the whole website to lo like, uh, load and look at the results? It's, if your site is taking three to four seconds to load on that day, it's almost like giving you 500 errors, because user will just go to another site and get that information. So along with scalability, performance was also very important for us. The most important part, as I mentioned, we want the elections uh, results to be up to date. So what I meant over here is like, so Newsroom will keep pushing the new uh, updates of the election result as soon as possible. And we wanted to make sure that the publishes that are happening shows up on the site quickly. In a very simple term, we wanted to avoid the stale content. Yes, we have caching, but who wants to see the cache of two years, uh, two hours old, <laughs> not two years, on the election results day? It's almost like not value at all. And lastly, since we are going for stress testing and it has capacity of breaking the system, we wanted to take this opportunity to exercise the resiliency plan that we have put in the place, like verifying the incident management process, how the system is recovering, what are the logs that we have to take care of it, and things like that. So for the next four sections, I'm going to talk about how did we plan for it, how did we prepare for it, the most fun part, how did we execute it, and what are the results of the stress test. So let's start with the planning. So when you plan for such a massive test, the first thing that comes to your mind is like, what tooling we will do? 
what power we need to simulate such a great uh, traffic that we want to do. So we decided to go with JMeter, which is an open source tool uh, for writing the load scripting. Uh, load scripting. It's a JVM-based uh, HTTP, and it's a very powerful tool. But JMeter itself has a limitation in a way that it needs a platform to run. And you can't run JMeter from your laptop to simulate the traffic that we wanted to do. So we partner with BlazeMeter. So BlazeMeter is a cloud provider for load generating that takes a JMeter script, spin a bunch of load generators in the cloud, and aggregate the reports for you. So it makes our life easier. You can also do this kind of stuff without BlazeMeter. It just needs a lot of work in terms of spinning a bunch of pods or servers and do some uh, in configuration to collect all the reports. The second thing is like, which environment we want to run this test? Which environment we want to break? And I almost realized you got this answer from the title. <laughs> and <laughs> so we wanted to run this test on an environment which is A, stable, which is production mirror. How many of you can confidently say that the staging environment is as stable as or as mirror-like as production? None of it. We are in the same boat. Even though, I mean, it sometimes it doesn't make sense, but also. So we wanted to have a data and an environment which is like production. And lastly, we want people to take this test seriously. So our higher leadership got buy-in, and I'm um, thank you for that. Our newsroom folks were brave enough to say, all right, let's do it. Let's break the production New York Times website and see when we fail. <laughs> As I mentioned, <laughs> since we are going to break the production website, preparation was very imperative for us. And as I mentioned also before, we had like more than 20 teams that we are working on. So our program managers and we worked really hard in doing a lot of internal coordination in deciding what time we want to run the test. What are the days where we will not have any planned news cycle? Uh, what are the teams that we need to take care of this in terms of communication? Not only internal, but external coordination is equally important. Nowadays, we have application and we have a lot of partners in cloud or any monitoring. So we wanted to take this opportunity to have them also participate with us in the test. So we wanted to strengthen this, our partnership. So we invited them to participate in the test and get a feel of how it will feel like on an actual election results day. So if anything happens, they exactly know who to contact and how to solve it together. Again, <laughs> since we're going to break the uh, production website, a failover plan was needed. Like what if the production website is completely down? What if you open your iOS app you know, and you can't see the news? So we created a bunch of scenarios, like what to do if this happens, what to do if this happens. So we started going all the way deep into the path of preparing to make sure that we also, also we work with customer service, like what to say when we are going to be down. Learning review. We just don't want to run the test and forget about it. We want to learn from the test. So we created a structure in which someone will log the timeline while the test is executing, we created a, a process on how those timelines will be consumed after the test is over. We will conduct a learning review as well as blameless post-mortem and have some uh, lessons learned from it, like what are the action items that we have to do. So since we talk about planning, let's talk about preparing for the test. The first thing we did is we started understanding each application in and out. So what it means is like what is the business purpose as well as technical purpose of the system? What are the internal and external dependency? What is the role of caching? So role of caching plays a very important role in terms of uh, load testing. So we wanted to make sure like how they are set up, so learn from it, so it helps us design the test accordingly. So uh, throughout the next four sections, I have a small section called tips, uh, which will have things that we learned or we did take care of it. So the first thing I want to clarify is like, don't try to stress test your website through any content delivery network. <laughs> you will not have enough power at all, and it doesn't solve any value to you. Second, unless you have a strong reason, don't hit the cached endpoints. Hit the host directly. That's where you will learn the most out of it. Second, script. JMeter, as well as most of the load testing script out there, are not browser. So what I meant is, when you go to the browser, you go to newyorktimes.com, it parses a bunch of calls, and it makes an automatic call that are in your JavaScript. But JMeter doesn't do that. So you have to design a script in a way that mimics your application behavior, like a user interacting with the site. So we started recording the traffic. 
of the actual and make sure like, okay, if you're going to New York Times, how many times it's calling the same, like our user info API and all those other APIs. And we started designing the test that will mimic an actual user. We also worked on creating the test data. Since we are going into production, we wanted to make sure that the traffic that we are simulating is as much production alike. So we created a bunch of cookies and headers and we created for it. The third point is very important. As I mentioned that we wanted to make sure that our site on that, uh, like one of the key objectives for the stress testing is to make sure that the results are accurate. So how to do that? So we created a bunch of script that mimics a newsroom activity of pushing the new updates at the same time. So we are throwing the traffic from the user perspective, and then we are tra doing the traffic from the newsroom perspective where we are busting the cache at the same time. So we wanted to stress the system from the both hand. Minor tip, make sure you send the full HTTP request whenever you do this kind of testing. Otherwise, a bunch of cloud providers will start calling you and sit, they will think that you are in some kind of sin attack. So don't do that. <laughs> make sure you send the full HTTP request. Third. Designing was very important for us. As I mentioned the graph before, there was some kind of traffic, like we are seeing the pattern. So we analyzed the past election results traffic as well as of any peak traffic that we have seen. And we designed the test accordingly, like what level we want to go at that time. And we're gonna talk more about it in the execution phase. We also exercised a bunch of location-based scenarios. So what I meant is, Many of your application may be in the cloud, and depending on where the traffic is originating, your servers might be getting hit to it. So we also exercise that, that okay, we, in real life, for example, if the 30% traffic is coming from the east, let's throw 30% traffic from the east and 70 from the west. So we try to do as much production traffic as possible. One of the tips from here is, you want to know where your app is hosted, and I'm sure all of you will know that. <laughs> But one thing to keep in mind is like, if you are hosted in let's say GCP, don't do a simulation of traffic in the same uh, cloud provider. Because many cloud provider has something called internal routing. So you will not get the real picture of latency and things like that. So if you're in the GCP, throw traffic from AWS. If you're in from AWS, throw the traffic from GCP and vice versa. Data, <laughs> that was interesting. Since we're going to run on production, we will create data production. We don't want our business to be get happy just like, hey, we have many users on just one day. So we work with the, our team to make sure that we provide a way to identify the traffic that we are throwing so that they can either scrape the data or do whatever they want, but at least make sure that we give them a way to identify it. And to do that, we provided a very easy solution called Refer Header. So if you guys can try to read along with me, it's a fun name, which is October Stress Test to Rock on Election Day. Yes, we really wanted this to be unique. <laughs> uh, along with that, we also make sure of like very common stuff, which is we don't want to hit cost implication ads. We don't want to test other servers. <laughs> we also don't want to test anything which might be like analytics, which gives the fake numbers and stuff like that. Lastly, we're in the monitoring conference, so we need to talk about that. So monitoring plays an important role when you're conducting tests like that. So we created a bunch of dashboard that will give us the indication of the system health just by one dashboard. Like what is our master dashboard that will show the health of all the stuff. Along with the system health, we also identified a bunch of metrics that we want to keep an eye while during a test execution. So I'm talking about more on the stress testing part at this point. As I mentioned, one of the key objectives of our stress testing was we wanted to make sure our site is performant. So we just don't wanted to so we did we just didn't want it to see if it's throwing any 400 or 500 errors. We also wanted to keep an eye on the response times. So we, there were the app metrics that we identify, like the 95th response time. What is what happens to like 99th when your system is above, above the normal peak traffic? So. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the, how did we execute the test? And this day was one of my most nerve wracking as well as exciting day in the New York Times. Hello? Yeah. So think this day as like a NASA launching some kind of rocket. <laughs> we had a war room where every representative of the team were there. There were representative from the customer service as well as the newsroom and they were waiting on us. Like we were like in the command of running the test and making sure of that. 
So we had some logistics that, of course, we had to take care of, making sure there is enough room. We established a communication protocol that if you are an application A, you will use this kind of communication protocol to talk to us while we're executing the test. And as I mentioned, we had a bunch of stakeholders also in the room, just curious what happens if the site goes down <laughs> that they have never experienced. Second, this was the fun part. It would have been impossible for one person to run the test at such a large scale and keeping an eye on all the reports. So we had multiple executors. And each test executors were given a responsibility of particular test or applications. And they were the sole responsible person to make sure that they are updating the stakeholders on what's actually happening on that particular test. Second, as I mentioned, like JMeter is not a browser. So that adds another complexity. When you have multiple test executor running the test at the same time, running them synchronously, it's very important. Because in a real life, if you go to let's like, a home page, your backend API might be calling three times. But if you're not synchronous over here, then you may be calling your home page one time, but your data API meant 30 times. So that doesn't relate the actual traffic. So we wanted to make sure everyone is synchronous. And we created a bunch of a way of identifying like where they are at any given time. Second, the third point, incremental. As I mentioned, we wanted to design the test in a way that we are seeing the traffic on the election. So to do that, what we did is like we created the test for multiple steps, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And at any given time, we wanted to make sure all the text executors at the same time. And if the commander is giving, let's go one more level up, then we are going one level up. And it was fun. It, like, I don't know how many of you will get chance, but it's fun running the test to break your production site. And we run the test total of two times. Why? Because we run the test first time, and we found a lot of issues that will go after that. So we wanted to make sure that the team resolve those issue, and we run this test again at the second time to make sure that they have resolved it, and then we are fully prepared for the D-Day. So you guys will be wondering, like, you guys have worked so hard designing, preparing. Did anything meaningful came out of it? Of course it did. <laughs> As you can see from this graph, it's, this graph is representing the system health of one of our application during the testing. Everything was going good for the first 30 to 40 minutes. People were chilling, talking. And all of a sudden, there's a wall of 500 errors. Not 10%, 20%, 100% 500 errors. Imagine this graph on an actual election results day. I'm sure people will not be happy. <laughs> so we were so glad that we were able to found out things like this on an actual stress test day and not on the election results day. What are the key findings apart from that? We identified a bunch of bottlenecks. We are all, all in the cloud. And one of the things we found out is like our auto-scaling rules were not optimal. They were, not dis they were not configured to handle the traffic peak that we are going to happen. So we tweaked a lot of our auto-scaling rules. Along with that, we discovered something called cloud quotas. How many of you in the room is aware of cloud quotas? Nice. I think by end of this session, hopefully everyone will go and learn about it. Because the graph that you saw before was we exhausted our cloud quotas. And it took us 30 minutes to identify and actually what's going on. So we would understand the importance of the cloud quotas. Also, we unsurface a lot of tech depths. We all have that issue where, OK, we'll do it tomorrow. It's not a priority. It will happen on next year, next quarter. And we found out that a lot of the tech depth that we were shoving under the table for a long time started hurting us. So it, all of a sudden, it becomes a priority for us. And along with that, we saw a bunch of latency issues. Yes, the site were not giving two, like 400, 500 errors. But the responsive time was so big that it's almost like not good for us. Second, we found that we have more improved observability. So here, I'm not only talking about technical observability, but also the team observability. Like in an organization like New York Times, where you have like multiple teams, we found out that how that team is depending on another team, and what is the relation between them. So we had a lot of teams who learn about each other. And then they were like, oh, my API is being consumed like this by this client. So they learn a lot of stuff like that. We also identify the key metrics, SLIs, that we want to keep an eye on an actual election results day. Because again, like this was an exercise that we wanted to learn. So we, this gives us a, a way of what monitoring dashboards that we need on that particular day. And it also helps on the logistics. For example, which team needs to sit next to which team, 
what cloud provider we need to provide them which team because they have to work together if any issues happen. We exercise resiliency plan. <laughs> so as you can see, like we had an issue, but that gave us, gave, gave us a chance to basically exercise the resolution plan. So we had an outage. So right away, it's people on, like, on call at that day, they had went into action. And they exercised the process that we had set up. Once we identified the bottleneck, once we learned the lessons, once we had all the stuff, we had increased confidence that we have never before. We had new cloud configuration. Everyone was a little skeptical. But once we run the test, and once we identify all the uh, uh, issues that we need to resolve, we had an increased confidence that, OK, we are ready for it. But are we actually ready for it? So let's see what happens on the midterm elections day. As projected, we had a record traffic for midterms. One of our service graphs that over here, we received up to 40x sustained traffic on that night. That was beyond our projections for that night. Along with that, since we are able to serve the user with the most stable, performant, and up-to-date key results, the users were happy with us, and they gave us a business. So we saw a significant registration growth on that particular day. That helped our product managers to understand that, OK, performance has something to do with the business growth. Third, as I mentioned, we did. everyone will have an outage. Even though we tried, there was an outage on our website, too. But the time that it took to resolve that outage was in a matter of minutes, because the team was already going through the process when the outage happened in the election uh, test day. So they already got the rehearsal on what to do. So we had, like, that helped us a lot on that day. This was the very first time that the New York Times conducted an exercise like this with all the technological room as well as with the newsroom. And not only it helped us prepare for the midterm elections, but it also helped us in understanding and learning so many things that will help us designing the system in the future in a most reliable and scalable way. And so we have more and more demand that, oh, we should do this more and more often and not just on elections day. More important than ever, <laughs> elections are coming next year. And now we feel we are better prepared for the election than ever because it's the same configuration, we learned the lessons, we just have to repeat ourselves. So the things that we did for the midterm election 2008 was incredibly helpful. And we are assuming this will be even bigger traffic spike that we'll ever see. So you guys will be asking is like, was it all worth it? Like you did all this kind of stress testing, your teams might be doing this and not doing any feature uh, development for like months. I will say yes, because not only we were able to satisfy the users by giving them the best experience, our newsroom worked hard day and night to get the reporting on the ground. And it's our duty as a technologist to give them a space and a stage to represent their voice. So we were really happy that their work was actually displayed and the election results were accurately shown to all of you guys. And with that, I would like to thank you for coming to this site and su <laughs> successfully suffering from food coma. <laughs>